Hello and welcome to this 52 week series on wisdom for confident and fluent English. Does speaking or writing in English look like this to you? Perhaps it looks like this or this. What can we do to open up and free up space in our hard drive to include English? What if becoming an everyday user of English were a walk in the park? It can be. Let's reframe what it means to be an everyday user of English so that by the end of this video, you'll have a concrete mini action plan, which is enjoyable for you to put into action and bring more confidence and fluency to your language production. And if you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button and invite the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video, which will be relevant to you if you're looking to become more confident in English. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Tanya Meyer. I'm an English as a foreign language teacher to adults specializing in mindfulness practices to help bring clarity, understanding and joy to your English language acquisition and use. So here we are reading the first 52 texts from this book, The Everyday Wisdom of Thich Nhat Hanh, Zen master, peace activist, writer, poet, and Buddhist monk. You do not need to read these texts in order because they are selected from his many texts and they are standalone. So if you've just arrived here, you're very welcome, no matter what number we're on. They're just a way of providing structure for us to bring more confidence and fluency to your life and to your English, because English is part of your life, perhaps a very important part. We'll be listening and reading these short texts together, which will give you an opportunity to practice producing English and paying attention to its natural rhythm and cadence, putting words together in a way that's natural and noticing how words fit together. You'll be practicing pronunciation. And as you read together with me, then you'll gain more confidence because you'll know whether you're following along and creating this rhythm as we read together. So there might be some vocabulary and grammar in these videos. But what I'd like you to focus on is your ability to reflect, to make connections and to bring more understanding to your English, but not in an intellectual way, not like, oh, I understand that A plus B equals C. This is more um, a, a deeper understanding that takes place beyond the intellect. And it takes place when we are open to that understanding or that insight happening. Because, you know, English doesn't just come out of your mouth magically. It cannot come out of your mouth unless it has been internalized in some way. And so you are responsible for the content which you internalize. And so if the, if the English that you're internalizing through, for example, commercial films or whatever it is that you watch um, or read or engage with in English, if, if that content is filled with, with violence, with, with anxiety, with, with um, drama, then, um, then your English will be imbued by those elements as well. Whereas if you take some time to internalize content in English, which builds confidence and fluency, then what do you think is going to happen to your English, right? So that's what um, we're focusing on here. Having more confident and fluent thoughts in order to produce more confident and fluent English. So let's get started with week five, 
Walking meditation, it's called. What could that be about? Speaking about a walk in the park. Perhaps you think that meditation is only for certain people and it only happens when people sit down in a very quiet room and cross their legs in a lotus position or maybe they're up on a mountain somewhere completely isolated. But if I change the word meditation for mind training or mental exercise, or even self-medication for better confidence and fluency, then would that resonate more with you? Remember to read out loud with me. We're going to read the text twice, the first time simply to understand what it's saying. That's all we want to do the first time round. There's absolutely no point in reading for any other purpose than to understand in other words, for meaning the first time. And then once we understand, once we have meaning, then we can go into further details. So the second time we read, we're going to focus on the words that we stress when we read and notice what happens to the words we don't stress. In other words, the weak words um, and how this creates a, a pattern that's very English sounding. And I'm going to invite you to imitate that as we read together. Ready? Let's go. Walking meditation. We have to awaken ourselves to the truth that we're here, alive. We're here making steps on this beautiful planet. That is already performing a miracle. But we have to be here in order for the miracle to be possible. We have to bring ourselves back to the here and the now. Therefore, each step we take becomes a miracle. If you're able to walk like that, each step will be very nourishing and healing. You walk as if you kiss the earth with your feet, as if you massage the earth with your feet. There is a lot of love in that practice of walking meditation. Okay, we're going to read that again now. And as I said, we're going to focus on the stressed words. Remember that in English, which is a language of rhythm and stress, we tend to stress the information words. So verbs, nouns, and adjectives. But language isn't only made up of verbs, nouns, and adjectives. There are lots of grammar words, as we speak, that tend to be weak. We don't stress them. And this is why they're difficult to notice because as listeners or as readers, we tend to be interested in the content, in what happens, and then these grammar words get lost. But now you're going to have the text in front of you as we read together and you can see the weak words together with the stressed words and notice the rhythm that is created by putting these contrasting ways of producing English together. So as, as you notice how stressed and weak come together, please don't confuse weak with unimportant because without weak, there's no strong. There needs to be weak and strong for this rhythm and stress to be there. And also remember that these weak words provide crucial information for the reader or listener to understand the message. Okay, so here we go. Remember to read out loud, practice your English mouth. <laughs> here we go. Walking meditation. We have to awaken ourselves to the truth that we're here, alive. We're here making steps on this beautiful planet. That is already performing a miracle. But we have to be here in order for the miracle to be possible. We have to bring ourselves back to the here and the now. Therefore, each step we take becomes a miracle. If you're able to walk like that, 
Each step will be very nourishing and healing. You walk as if you kiss the earth with your feet, as if you massage the earth with your feet. There is a lot of love in that practice of walking meditation. To focus on content, write a comment below on what you understand by this week's text. And to focus on form, write a comment below about your experience of producing stressed and weak words as we read together in English. Okay, so these are my thoughts on the text. I've made a few notes here. The first thing is the importance of taking ourselves out for a walk and doing it often. You know, going out for a walk, wherever you might be, whether it's the middle of a city or suburbia or the countryside, a, a small town, wherever you might be, taking regular walks is, I would say, crucial for physical, mental, and emotional well-being. And linking this with confident and fluent English, I think it's clear that the healthier we are, the more we, we feel okay in ourselves, that we're strong and we're healthy, the more conditions we're, we're creating for English to be available to us and, and we, for, for us to be able to incorporate it into our life. You see, we, we spend so much time the, in these modern days in, in our car or in public transport, sitting still or in our office in front of the computer. And we, we forget that we have a body <laughs> and our mind cannot be functioning without a healthy body. So bringing attention to our body is a wonderful way of taking care of ourselves and bringing health to our body. Cultivating whatever degree of health we're able to cultivate in our body in the present moment is a precondition for confident and fluent communication. If we're ill or in pain, then we'll need to focus on that aspect of our experience before we can turn our attention to improving any skill. Something else we can say about taking ourselves out for a walk is that it's highly enjoyable to give ourselves regular breaks from whatever it is that we're doing. And it's free. There's no membership to pay. You just stand up and walk out the door. Another idea that comes to mind is that I frequently contemplate the fact that I'm able to walk. You know, here in my neighborhood, I can think of at least four people who are unable to walk. They are either in a wheelchair because they've had both legs amputated or they walk with a walking frame because one of their legs has been amputated. And so whenever I encounter these people, I really appreciate and feel grateful for the fact that sufficient conditions are there for me to be able to walk. Now, something else is that when we go out for a walk, it's an opportunity for us to get out of our heads because, well, there are two ways of walking, right? One way is to go out and to take our problem or our thinking with us. And then as we walk, we continue to consume these ideas that aren't very helpful. Or the other way is to go out to clear our head, to clear our mind by bringing our attention to whatever is in front of us in that moment. And it could be the blue sky, it could be the clouds, you might be able to hear um, birds singing, or it might be a beautiful building, it might be people walking down the street, a squirrel running up a tree, 
whatever it is that is happening in that moment is an opportunity for you to stop thinking about whatever um, it is that is very compelling and bring your attention to whatever is happening outside while at the same time, as the text says, becoming aware of your feet on the ground kissing the earth as you make each step. Just those two things, bringing your attention to the soles of your feet, massaging the earth and observing what is happening around you, just that is already a lot. And if you're able to do that, then your mind won't be so busy. You're training your mind to be less busy. And when you're less busy with these thoughts and ideas that are very compelling and that make us believe that we don't have time for English, then suddenly we do have time for English because we feel calmer and we've taken ourselves out and we've enjoyed the outdoors. And suddenly time and space open up for us without having to make a great effort or setting time apart to study English. You know, that I'm not saying that that's not a good idea. We can do that as well. But taking ourselves out for a walk just for the pleasure of doing that creates time and space for English to find a way in without making a great deal of effort. So do you make going out for a walk a part of your everyday life? What kind of action plan can you put into place then? Well, just taking yourself out and focusing on the soles of your feet, touching the earth, kissing the earth with each step and noticing what is happening around you is a lot. But if your mind wants to be occupied, then why not name what you can see in English? Name what you become aware of in your body in English. Any, any sensations that you have, pleasant or unpleasant. Any emotions that you become aware of, can you name them in English? How are you feeling in that moment? And any thoughts that might be arising, are you able in that moment to name what you are thinking in English? This doesn't have to be very long. Just are you able to be aware of your thoughts and say what they are in English in your mind? And if you are able to, to say, okay, I realize that what I'm thinking about is, and then whatever it is, and then as soon as you name the thought, then you can release it and return your attention to whatever is going on around you in that moment. This kind of practice is very helpful in grounding and incorporating English beyond the thinking mind. And so if you're looking for more ways of doing this, how to incorporate English into your everyday life so that it doesn't feel like something that's locked up in a closet way at the back there, but more a part of your everyday experience, then make sure you check out the links in the description box below about my program and make sure that you also pick up a copy of my free guide, How to Revolutionize Your English, which is full of practical ideas that you can put into practice straight away to start incorporating English into your everyday life. Confidence and fluency are actually beyond words and language. They come from being in contact with deeper aspects of ourselves and allowing our busy minds to settle so that we can see more clearly the path ahead and take confident steps forward. And so this practice of, of slowing down, although it might be counterintuitive for many, can actually be hugely helpful 
in allowing us to make great progress and in a way that's enjoyable and pleasant. So with that, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to watch the full series up to now, I'll leave a, a link to the playlist here and here and in the description box. And I'll see you in the next one. Remember to invite the bell to be notified when I upload it. See you then. Bye for now.